if you can't join us. Pastor Pete's native country had been having a lot of problems and life was extremely difficult for the citizens. Prayers had been going on for years on behalf of their country. It seemed, however, that the more the people prayed for their country, the worse things became. Naturally, many began to get tired, wondering if anything would ever change. Many others, on the other hand, decided to keep praying and believing that one day God would visit their land with a mighty redemption and transformation. One day, while addressing members of his congregation, Pastor Pete began to talk about their native land. He told the brethren that their country was a hopeless case that could never be redeemed and he would never waste precious time praying for her. As far as he was concerned, asking God to perform a miracle of transformation in their country was like trying to gather spilled milk back into a glass. It could never happen. Missy, a member of Pastor Pete's church, was disgusted as she sat listening to the pastor's speech. She had been praying for decades that God should bring about a change to the situation of their homeland and was determined to keep praying since Luke chapter 18 verse 1 says that people should always pray and not give up. No argument from Pastor Pete or anyone else could make her stop praying and believing that her beloved country would one day receive healing and uplifting. But what if there were some in the church who were already getting tired of praying for their nation and all that they needed was to hear the kind of words coming from Pastor Pete's mouth so that they could stop their prayers? Missy silently prayed the Lord to shield the hearts and minds of their church members from what could be a negative impact of Pastor Pete's words on them. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. That's the New International Version. There are so many things that can be classified as good works. Conscious, deliberate obedience to the Word of God with the help of the Holy Spirit is part of it. Interceding for others, sharing the gospel with unsaved souls, helping the needy as the Lord empowers and leads us, counseling, mentoring new and struggling believers, and encouraging those who are struggling with their ministries are some of the other good works the Lord would like to see us do. He even wants us to pray for our native lands and play whatever role he leads us to in ensuring the progress of the land. If you reside in a foreign land, God even wants you to pray for the good of that land. Jeremiah chapter 29 from verse 1 to 7. This is a text of the letter that the prophet Jeremiah sent from Jerusalem to the surviving elders among the exiles and to the priests, the prophets, and all the other people Nebuchadnezzar had carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. This was after King Jehoiakim and the queen mother, the, the court officials and the leaders of Judah and Jerusalem, the skilled workers and the artisans had gone into exile from Jerusalem. He entrusted the letter to Elasa, son of Shaphan, and to Gemariah, son of Hilkiah, whom Zedekiah, king of Judah, sent to King Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon. It said, This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to all those I carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number there. Do not decrease. Also, seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it pro prospers, you too will prosper. That's the New International Version. If God wanted his people to pray for the good of the land to which he carried them as exiles because of their sins, how much less would he want us to pray for any country we reside in, whether it's ours or not. Just like Pastor Pete, many people will not only refuse to do good works, but also knowingly or unintentionally dissuade others from doing them. Some people would advise wives to stop their husbands from caring for their aged parents, treat their housemates or drivers like footmats, make their spouse neglect his children from a previous relationship, and so on. God expects us to do good works. If you've decided not to, that's your choice. But whenever you are tempted to discourage others from doing good, think of Matthew chapter 23, verse 13. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You shut the door of the kingdom of heaven in people's faces. 
You yourselves do not enter, nor will you let those enter who are trying to. That's the New International Version. And if you have someone in your life who is trying to stop you from doing good, remember that whenever there is a clash between God's will and someone else's, God should win. May the Lord give us wisdom in Jesus' name. Amen.